my lovely bookish friends and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be going through my March wrap up, so all the books that I read last month. And this last month was an interesting reading month, so let us get to the books. First up I read the third book in the Nevermore series, which is Hollypox. The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. Now I'm actually going to give you the synopsis for kind of the first book in the overview of the series as I don't want to really spoil anything for anyone who hasn't read the first two books. And it goes, Morgan Crow is cursed, destined to die on her 11th birthday, but as the clock strikes midnight she is whisked away by a remarkable man called Jupiter North and is taken to a seat the secret city of Nevermore where she joins the wondrous society. This book takes place two years later, where we discover exactly what it is the Wondrous Society is for, and then deals with a sinister plot to destroy the peace of Nevermore. I listen to this as an audiobook, and the narrator is just brilliant, and it really just brings the world to life. This is the third book, and it's definitely my favourite so far in the series. It's a little bit darker, and the story really picks up, and I just, I just love the characters and the world. And I'm honestly really looking forward to reading the fourth book when it comes out later this year. Next up we have Wild Swans by Jackie Morris. This is a retelling of the Wild Swan fairy tale and it's really just a very beautifully done edition of this story. Jackie Morris's illustrations are stunning throughout and the storytelling is very lyrical and it really keeps the fairy tale style but she adds in a bit of a sort of nice feminist touch to the story and yeah it's just it's a really nice easy and beautifully written read. Okay so next up I read The Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Leah Bardugo. This is a YA fantasy series and is set in the world-torn world in which Elena Starkoff, an orphan turned soldier and her best friend Mal reside. A sudden turn of events sees Elena realising that she has extraordinary powers that could be the key to setting her homeland free from a dark entity called the Fold, filled with monstrous creatures called the Fulcra. Now, this series, ugh, this was a struggle, okay? It was on my TBR for the year, so I really wanted to read it, and I've talked about this before in a previous video, but I'd already seen like the Netflix show, like the first series, and to be honest, I only really watched it for the Crows because I love Six of Crows, that's one of my favourite series. Have the Elena storyline didn't really interest in me, but I wanted to give it a read regardless, and honestly I didn't get any more interested in her storyline as I was reading this either, and the first book was okay, however the second book, oh my goodness, I almost DNF'd it so many times, it was a real struggle to get through. The third book, however, did really pick up, and I really liked how they ended it, which is why I'm now not so keen on how they've ended the second series of the show, but anyway, I really liked the ending, I thought that was a really nice clean wrap up for the series but yeah honestly I just wasn't a fan it wasn't quite my cup of tea. After reading the trilogy I fell into a bit of a slump and I just wanted to read something that I knew I would definitely like so I just binged some of my favourite manga which is Snow White with the red hair. This follows our main girl who is a herbalist and lives in this kingdom where the prince is a bit of a dandy and he finds out that she has red hair and wants her to make her his mistress. But he, she ain't having any of that so she leaves and ends up befriending a prince of the neighbouring kingdom, my boy Zen, and she becomes a royal herbalist in his country and the story goes on from there. I absolutely adore this manga, I've spoken about it a number of times on this channel. It is also an animal A and it is just so wholesome. And it was perfect for when I was falling into a reading slump. This book just picks me up and puts me in a good mood. And I'm just, oh, just Zen, our prince, he's just all the green flags. I love his characters so much. Honestly, I cannot stress enough how much I adore this series. So please go and check it out. Next up was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This follows Mika, who is one of the few witches in Britain who lives her life by free rules. Hydro magic keep your head down and stay away from other witches. But when an unexpected message arrives begging her to travel to a remote mysterious nowhere house to teach three young witches, she jumps at the chance at a different life. Nowhere house is nothing like she expects and she ends up being tangled up in the lives and the secrets of its quirky caring inhabitants and finds herself feeling like she belongs somewhere for the very first time. 
This book surprised me in a good way. It was a little bit spicy, which I'm not a fan of, however there wasn't too much and the romance wasn't the main focus of the story. It was more about the found family and it was really cute and just fun. I kind of half guessed the plus twist, but that didn't really spoil my enjoyment. It was just a really delightful read and I do highly recommend this one, especially if you're in a bit of a reading slump or you just want something that's a bit of a pick-me-up. Now that was the last book that I finished in March, but I have three that I'm currently reading. The first is Misasaki's World by Susan Napier. This is a non-fiction book and it's all about the creative world of Misasaki, who is the genius behind Studio Ghibli. I actually started this last month, but I still haven't finished it as I'm quite slow when it comes to non-fiction. I'm also listening to The Enchanted April as an audiobook. This is a classic that follows a group of women who are, are living kind of dual lives who then come together to rent a castle in Italy for a month. I'm enjoying it so far and it's a great read for this season. I will give a more detailed what I thought about it when I have finished the audiobook. And finally, this is a book that I am almost finished as it's quite short. I just recently got it from the library and it is On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. This book is basically like a letter to the author's mother that she'll probably never read and it goes through his struggles about being Vietnamese, grown up in America, sexuality and other aspects of his life. This is a book that doesn't have a lot in terms of plot but it has some of the, honestly, some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read. It is just beautiful and it's almost like poetry in some way of the ways that he writes and I'm honestly really looking forward to finishing it. It's just, I feel like it's one that I might have to get and annotate one day because honestly there's some really beautiful prose in this. And there we have it, they were all the books that I read in March. And yeah, like I said at the beginning, it was definitely an interesting reading month. We have some, it's weird because I actually read quite a lot, but because a lot of them were manga, they were quite short and they were, I read them in a day. So looking at it like this, it feels like, oh, she read a lot of books. But I know that after Shadow and Bone, I went into such a slump because those books were <laughs> a struggle to read. Like, you know what, if you love them, that's great and whatever. And they weren't bad or awful, otherwise I wouldn't show them on my channel because that is how I deal with books that I absolutely hate. You just won't see on this channel. So if I liked them enough that to be seen and to get a reading vlog, you know, they weren't awful, but I definitely <laughs> struggled to get back into books after finishing those ones. So diving into my favourite manga was definitely much needed. And then The Secret Society, the Secret Society of Irregular Witches was such an unexpected joy to read. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I was really happy with that one. And again, I loved the Nevermore series. The Holopox at the beginning of the month was definitely a... Oh, that was just a great read. I, I love those books. I know they're children's books, but they're that series I'm really invested in and I can't wait for the fourth book to come out later this year. Right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing as I have a lot more bookish content to come. So, until next time, my lovely bookish friends, goodbye.